Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Normanness Right. In last week's video, we talked about MERV and MERV A rated filters. So it just makes sense that this week we talk about HEPA and ULPA filters. So let's get started. If you need higher filtration than MERV-16, you're getting into the range of HEPA and ULPA filters. HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air, and ULPA stands for Ultra Low Particulate Air. HEPA filters were actually designed in the 1940s for the Manhattan Project to prevent the spread of airborne radioactive contaminants. It was commercialized a decade later, once the war was over, and now you see HEPA filters in many critical environment applications like pharmaceutical industry, hospitals, and aerospace, just to name a few. HEPA filters are 99.97% effective for eliminating particulate matter of 0.3 micron diameter or larger, and ULPA filters are 99.999% effective at removing particulate matter of 0.12 micron diameter or larger. Let's move this over here. HEPA and ULPA filters work the same way regular filters do, by capturing the particles through straining, inertial impact, interception, and diffusion. You can go back to the Filter Basics video to learn more about how these work. HEPA filters are pleated filters, but they're much thicker than regular filters. ULPA filters, like HEPA filters, are thicker than regular filters, but they are also more dense than HEPA filters, so they can catch the smaller particles. So let's move this out of the way. There are a couple different types of HEPA filters. There are panel filters, which are used in low airflow applications. For example, you would see these in sealing applications or portable HEPA units. Next, you have high airflow HEPAs. These are often referred to as compact or V-bank HEPA filters. You'll see these in air handlers. And then there are HEPA filters that are tied to specific designs or installations, like cylindrical HEPA filters. There are three basic filter medias that you will see used. Glass fiber, which has been used since the 1950, maintains its efficiency throughout its lifetime, but it's fragile and can easily be damaged, possibly creating holes where the filter isn't as effective. Then we have membrane media, which was developed in the 1990s to have lower pressure drop. And most recently, you'll have multi-fiber polymeric media. This was designed to combine the benefits of glass and membrane media. Let's move this out of the way. HEPA filters are often used with a MERV-8 pre-filter to help extend the life of the more expensive HEPA filter. You will also see gel seals on these filters. The gel seal is a dark blue gel that goes around the edge of the filter. A knife edge goes into the gel seal, forming the seal. This makes sure no air will leak past the filter media. One challenge to using HEPA and ULPA filters is that they have a high static pressure drop. A standard 1-inch MERV-13 filter will have a pressure drop of about a quarter inch. HEPA filters could have about a half inch or more depending on airflow. And then ULPA filters would be an additional 20 to 50% more than the HEPA filter. This means that you need higher pressure in your HVAC system to overcome the loss of the pressure through the filter. Your fans and your motors usually have to be larger to produce the airflow that you need, meaning that it will also use more energy. For this reason, it's difficult to retrofit a system with HEPA or OPA filters. So let's bring all of this back on screen so you can see it all. That's an overview of HEPA and OPA filters. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for watching.